Hanukkah is the most, has the most specific revelation of the end times. And so many people miss it. Prophecy people miss it. Jewish people certainly miss it. Christians miss it. This thing holds probably the most exact, precise revelation of what's going to happen in the end times. Wow. Also, also, the strategy of how to overcome in the end times is in, is in this revelation. Um, and, you know, people don't realize, if you ask, where is it in the Bible? You know, if you ask, where is Hanukkah celebrated yeah, in the Bible? Yeah, where is it in the Bible? Well, well the thing <laughs> is that, well, that. that's an interesting, that Hanukkah, Hanukkah is only celebrated in the New Testament. It's what? only in the New Testament. People don't realize this. I mean, it's a great thing to witness to Jewish people. You say, where is Hanukkah in the Bible? It's prophesied in the Old Testament, Daniel prophesies of it. Over 200 years before Yeshua was born, and we go back to the time that Daniel prophesied. An angel told him that there would be an empire that would come up and would dominate and, and take over the Chaldean Empire, the, the empire of the Medes and the Persians. That turned about, out to be Alexander the Great, who was that great horn, and when he was a very young man, after conquering that part of the world... Then he died as a young man in Babylon, and his kingdom was divided up into four kingdoms, which turned out to be Egypt, Assyria, Turkey, and Greece. And Daniel prophesied about this event. His kingdom would be divided up into four kingdoms, Egypt, Assyria, Turkey, and Greece. And we remember that by eat Greece. Egypt, Assyria, Turkey, and Greece. That's pretty gross. Think of eating Greece. Okay, all right. But... One of these generals uh, that, that came up out of that was Antiochus. And Antiochus took on the title of Epiphanes. You say, where's Hanukkah in the Bible? It's prophesied in the Old Testament. Daniel prophesies of it, but it doesn't happen. It happens in the middle of the Old and New Testament. It only appears in the New Testament. And the one who celebrates it is Jesus. Yeshua, Messiah, is the one who celebrates Hanukkah. Mm. And, and you find it in the book of John, John 10, mm -hmm. and it, the problem is when they translated it into the Greek and into English, mm -hmm. you can look at it and you don't even realize it's Hanukkah. It says in John 10, it says it was winter time, and Messiah was in the temple in Jerusalem. It was winter time in the, port, the porch of Solomon. It says, and it was the feast of dedication. Oh. Dedication is how we read it, so nobody knows. Dedication in Hebrew is Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Oh, it's Hanukkah. So the one who celebrates, the one who, and the only one in the Bible who celebrates Hanukkah is Jesus. Jesus, the one, the one that centers on Christmas, we don't know that he celebrated Christmas, but he celebrated Hanukkah. <laughs> so the one who, you know, so there's a connection right there. Oh, it's yeah. all, and that's a great thing, again, a witnessing tool to Jewish people. Where, sure. Do you know where Hanukkah is in the Bible? New Testament. Oh. It's John 10. Messiah celebrates Hanukkah. Our culture has gone further and further away from the Scripture, away from the Bible. People are no longer taught the Bible. This book was taken out of the Bible. See, the Bible that I have, the King James Version of the Bible that I have in my hands right now, is not the same King James Version that it was in, in uh, the 1700s. In the 1700s, it still had the book of Maccabees from the Apocrypha, what's called the Apocrypha now, but the book of Maccabees tells the story that I just told you. And I'm glad that you asked that question. Because most Americans that have grown up in their, uh, in their churches in this generation have no idea that they don't even have the King James Version of the Bible anymore. Books were taken out. The story of the Maccabees was taken out. And so when people read in the New Testament about Yeshua keeping the Feast of Dedication, which in Hebrew is what? Hanukkah. They have no idea what Hanukkah is all about because they have never read the Bible. They, because it was taken out. And so that's why we restore that, and that is why it's important that we all study the Scripture so that we can understand from cover to cover the plan of the Almighty. My 100-year-old bookmark has its place in my 100-year-old Bible, and I keep it right in the book of Maccabees. The Archbishop of Canterbury imposed a $50,000 fine for anyone who would publish the King James Version of the Bible without the book of Maccabees in it. He understood what very few people understand today. Without the, the book of Maccabees, without understanding Hanukkah and its prophetic significance, 
then we do not understand why Yeshua spent so much time, so much energy in why he did what he did at the Feast of Dedications, or in Hebrew, Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a prophetically significant event, and just 75 years later, after this was published, the book of Maccabees was no longer in your King James Version of the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to throw away any part of scriptures, any part of history. We want to understand the words of Yeshua in their original context. Everyone in the land of Israel understood Hanukkah and the Feast of Dedications. It is because it's been removed from our Bible that we no longer have that touchstone with prophetic reality that is going to be reenacted, is going to play again in the last days. Just as Antiochus Epiphanes was a picture of the end time anti Messiah, so we are going to be the Hanukkah warriors, the priests and kings that play our role in preserving and bringing into effect the kingdom of heaven in this day and time. Messiah celebrates Hanukkah. And as he does, and that's when he's revealing, I am the one. I mean, right there, his, he gives a Hanukkah speech. And then, and the thing about it is, the other connection is that without Hanukkah, you would not have Christmas. Hanukkah brought Christmas because if there was no Hanukkah, the faith of Israel would have been wiped out, and that we'll get into it. But it would have been gone. The biblical faith would have been gone. There would be no, G no Mary, no Joseph, no, no apostles. No, they wouldn't be there. So Hanukkah brings Christmas. So, so it is a very, a, a, a feast that, Jew, that not only Jewish people should know about, or, you know, and there, I know many Christians who actually like the menorah, but it's something that has everything to do with our faith. So mm. it very much, and that, that's just where it is. But then on top of it, you've got this end time revelation oh. that is so filled with things, mm. which we, we can get into. I want to do that. Yeah. Can we do it now? It. Yes, we can do it now. I want to know. I'm, yeah. I'm an end-time preacher, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, the first thing, the first clue about Hanukkah, and we'll, we'll get, we can get it, we'll get it. In order to understand it, you, want, you need to know the story of it. But before that, to even say this, uh, for instance, the, the, the history of Hanukkah, the record is not, in the, is not the Bible proper. It's in the book of Maccabees. That, they record it. But it is history. It's real, and God was in it. God was doing this. Because, mm -hmm. again, if he didn't do it, you'd have no Messiah coming. Right. So God was in Hanukkah. And so it's recorded in the book of Maccabees. That's history. You can, it's not the Bible. We can use it as history. Mm -hmm. And so what it says is, it says that, it says it speaks about what they did. It speaks about uh, this, it, it talks about this man called Antiochus, who was this, this king we're going to get into. But this mm -hmm. has everything to do with the end times. Mm -hmm. And it speaks about something that, that the book of Daniel prophesies of it. So the book of Daniel says, so you read the end of Daniel, it says, it speak, it, he speaks about Antiochus. He speaks about the events of Hanukkah. And he speaks about, the, and what he says is, he says how long, he, what Antiochus did is he desecrated the temple. Sound familiar? Mm. He, he, he uh -huh. desecrated the temple and he, he caused the sacrifices to cease. And says, for how long is this going to be? And, and the answer given in Daniel in the original version, mm -hmm. it says it will be for a time, times, and half a time. Mm -hmm. A time is a year, times is two years, and half a time is three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So Hanukkah, you begin to have this figure of three and a half years is all about this thing about Hanukkah. But then when you read Daniel, who speaks about this, he also speaks about the end. He says, the people of the prince who will come will destroy the city. He speaks about the Antichrist. The people who destroyed the city were the Romans. He's saying the, the, the people, the prince who shall come, he will make a covenant for a week. It's a year, seven, eight. He says, in the middle of the week, he'll turn against this. The middle of the week, that's three and a half years. That's times, times, that's the Hanukkah number mm. you find in the end times. Then when you read the book of Revelation, you see it, yeah. says, it says, Revelation 11, I was given a read like a measuring rod and told, go and measure the temple of God, the altar, count the worshipers there, but keep, don't measure the outer court. They will trample the holy city for 42 months. How long is 42 months? Three and a half years. Yes. That's the Hanukkah, that's the Hanukkah number. Times, time, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Then Revelation 12, verse 6, is the woman fled into the desert, yes. place prepared. She was going to be taken care of for how long? 1,260 days. How long is 1,260 days? Mm -hmm. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. All again. that. So all right away, you're seeing that Hanukkah is the beginning of all this revelation that it comes back in the book of Revelation. And so what, here's the, to understand. What well, this is to do yeah. with Antichrist. 
Three and a half years. Has, and Hanukkah has... Am I a, getting ahead yes, of myself? Yes, here? No, I you're mean, right. You're absolutely but right. But that's... That, you, oh, you all know, three and a half years, that's where the... the and then the, the seven years, and then the three and a half yes. the Antichrist. Yes. What does this have to do with Antichrist it, in Hanukkah? It was all... It's all revealed in Hanukkah. The, whole, the Antichrist is revealed in Hanukkah. The end times are revealed in Hanukkah. The persecutions revealed in Hanukkah. What's happening in America is revealed in Hanukkah. It's all there. And the thing is... And so, the thing is, for instance, here's another one. You know, Daniel speaks about this desecration of the temple. And yeah. they called it back then, they called it the abomination That's desolation. Right. That's but right. that was Hanukkah. That had to do with, but then Messiah says, when you see what was spoken of by the yes. prophet Daniel, it's, gonna, it's not just what happened, it's going to happen again. Yes. What happened in Hanukkah is going to happen in the book of Revelation. Oh, my Lord. So it's all there in Hanukkah specifically about it's going to touch everything that's happening right now, even what, what we were here to pray about, what happened in America. It's all there. And people, and people you know, are innocently celebrating this thing without realizing how incredible. And it's going to give also the strategy of how to overcome in the end times. So but Jesus this. says the abomination, the desolation will take place before he returns. That's right. And people say, oh, no, no. Everybody seems to be teaching that the Antichrist uh, will not be revealed till after... Jesus comes back. But yet Jesus says the opposite. Isn't that right? Yes. And you're teaching yes. this. This is the most in-depth teaching on this I've ever heard. Yeah. I, I go, I, yeah I, don't they, let they, me interrupt you. Let's go on. No, this is, and, and this is actually, you know, licking just a link to the harbinger is if people say, well, how does this all go together? When you notice, when you look at the end times, you don't see America as the head of nations specifically mentioned as the head of nations. Oh. So the point is, what is the harbinger is kind of filling in the gap that it's between now and then, if America doesn't turn back, this is what's going to happen. It's going to set up another world system when you don't have this, this present American-led thing. So now we're sort of taking the big picture, where the big picture is the end times and is, is a time where, with, with, where, where what we know now as America is, is, has ended before this happened. So we are, we are watching this happen. And for, to understand this, Jim, and to, and for, for, to understand Hanukkah, to understand where this, this is going to open up everything. And by the way, there's probably tons of stuff that I... I haven't seen, but that are there. Oh, so it's all it's there. amazing. And so the first thing is, to, you gotta, we got to know the story of Hanukkah in order to understand it. This is the blueprint. Just like with the harbinger, you have a blueprint yeah. of yes. what's going to, of yes. ancient yes. Israel and you have America, yes. Yes. you have a blueprint of the end times. So what happens? This is what happens. It's in between Old and New Testament. You have, you have Israel. Okay, they've been restored. They have a temple, all that. But what happens is a new civilization rises up, the Greek civilization, they want to make everybody the same, a one-world system. They want everybody to come into the system. So they want Israel to give up their faith. So what happens is a man rises up. His name is Antiochus. It even sounds like the Antichrist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or Antiochus in, in the Greek. Oh. Antiochus king. Antiochus, his full name is Antiochus Epiphanes. He gets up and he, he, what he does is he declares, the Book of Matthew says, he says, Every, his kingdom shall all be, they will all follow the gods of the Greeks. They will follow Zeus. And he says, every nation must give up its tradition, give up its gods, give up whatever it have, and they will all come into this. Well, people start doing it all over the kingdom to become this one world system. Yeah. And what happens is, and there's one people who cause a problem. There's one people who just don't fit into the system, always. They never fit in. And guess which people that is? Israel. They just never fit in. And so always a problem. So he says, you know what? I'm going to wipe them. I'm going to wipe out this faith. And if he did this, this is the enemy, because the enemy knows that Jesus is coming. If he can wipe this out, he tries to wipe it out. Then he tries, yeah, yeah. Just, just like um, I'm a, a little tangent, same thing when Israel was going to come back as a nation in 1948 and all the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. Guess what the enemy does? He raises up Hitler to try to destroy right. Israel. Because if he does it, he stopped all the prophecies. So that's why it's so satanic. Well, even before, before Messiah comes, comes this. this. It's an attempt to destroy the faith of Israel, make everybody apostatize. So he puts the laws. What he does, is he goes into the temple, into the holy place, and he sets up an idol in the temple. Does that sound familiar? Mm. He sets up an image in the temple, mm. and he slaughters a pig in the temple to desecrate the Ugh. temple. So it is called the abomination desolation. It makes the holy place desolate. And so for three and a half, for, the, for this time period, he abolishes all sacrifices to God, and he, the temple becomes a pagan temple, the temple of God. A pig is a very unclean am animal in Bible days. Yes. Old Testament. Still, yes. Still, yeah, yeah. still yeah. Not, not very clean. Just. Sorry, you pig farmers. Don't get no. mad at us. But yeah. they really, and so it was an abomination that yes. bring a pig. yes. It's so a, opposite of a lamb. Exactly, exactly. Because the spirit, and we're going to get into it, because we're going to get into the spirit of the Antichrist. People, are, you know, people look for the Antichrist, which is 
you know, one thing, but the point is people don't realize the bigger picture. The spirit of the Antichrist is already working and already affecting our lives as we get closer. And that's revealed in Hanukkah. So what happens is, so he desecrates it. The temple of God, the holy temple, becomes a pagan temple. It becomes a desecrated, unholy, uh, the house of God. They have, they have, uh, they have pagan celebrations in it. They, it's darkened. It become, they, have, they have sexual from immorality in the temple, and it's off limits. No Jewish person can go up there and, celebrate, and worship God. Then he says, we're going to persecute the people of God. Anybody caught with a Bible or a scroll is going to be killed, and they start burning scrolls, burning Bibles. They say anybody who observes the Sabbath is going to be killed. Anybody who teaches their children in the ways of God will be killed. Anybody, we're going to, in fact, we're going to force across Israel, we're going to force people to worship the, the Greek gods. So they, they force people to sacrifice, to, they set up altars all over the land of Israel. And it looks like he's going to wipe out the faith of the, of the Bible. It's going to be gone, which, in which case we would never be saved. So this is the enemy doing it all over. It looks like he's going to win, and, and, and people across Israel start going along with it. This is the time, this is the way the times are going. We better just go along with it. We'll go along with the Greeks. We'll go along with this. We'll, we'll, we'll walk around naked in the gymnasiums. We'll build up the, we'll be like the Greeks because that's, we'll do that. So they start going along with it. Even religious people start going along with this apostasy. All happening, it's going to be wiped out, except that God has a different plan. And from, from the middle of nowhere, from the hill country of Judea, people who are kind of not in the world system, they're a family called, it's Matth- his name was Matthew or Mattathias, and he has these sons. And he, he's watching as, the, as they're forcing people to sacrifice to this, and he says, I will not do that. And he says, he says Far, I will never follow away from God. He, he raises up, he, he starts a resistance. He heads for the hills because they're going to be persecuted. He and his sons, one is called Judah one, or Yehuda, one is called Jonathan, Jonathan, and they, they get, are given the name the Maccabees. That's where you get the name Maccabees. Mm. And so they, get, they go up to the hills. They don't know how to fight. They don't know how to do anything. They say, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna resist this. What happens is they, the Greeks send an army against them, and miraculously the Greeks lose against them. They take the weapons. They didn't have weapons before. They're out man. And then they, they, then they send another army against them, they win again. Then they send another, they say, whoever's for God, come with us, leave the world, come to the mountains, come. Whoever's for God, you got to make a stand. You cannot just go along with this. People start joining them. Another army comes, miraculously, they win again. And then, then they look at the, they, they were looking at all the numbers. They say, we're outnumbered. We don't even know how to do this. They say, but, but with God, it doesn't matter how few we are. It doesn't matter if we're the minority, we're going to win. And so they pray. They literally pray and fast. They fast and pray. And they win. And finally, you know, Antiochus, who actually we're going to talk about him as the shadow of what he does. He is the shadow of the, of the, the Antichrist that the Bible gives. But he sends his, half of his entire army of the kingdom into the little land of Israel with elephants and all that to wipe them out completely. And the Maccabees win against Antiochus. They win, and so it's all gone. They come up to the temple. They look at the temple, and they see this pagan place, desecrated, defiled, all these things, the idol that the, that the Antiochus set up, they take it out, they smash it, they take it, they, they find the temple, they reconsecrate everything, they reconsecrate, they find the lamp, the, the candle, you know, or, the, or they re, redo it, which had been gone, no light, no light of God. They put it back, they light the lights of the menorah, and there is, a, there is a story later by the rabbis that there was a miracle of oil. That's, a, that's legend, okay? But what they did is they light, they light it and they celebrate. They dedicate the temple by lighting the menorah, the light of God. And this becomes the lights of the Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the rededication of the temple. So here they rededicate it, victory. They, they cleanse themselves. They, everybody repents and cleanses themselves. The temple is back and Israel becomes a nation again unto God, and Messiah comes. Now that is Hanukkah. Now Hanukkah, now- Woo, isn't that a good, wow. We would not, again, none of us here would be saved. Which is Christmas too. (laughs) Christmas is coming, and and it would never happen if this didn't happen, so God was in this, and the thing is that, and to this day, so Jewish people are are lighting the lights of the menorah, Yes. but most Jewish people don't even realize why they're doing it. They're celebrating a temple that doesn't exist. There hasn't been a temple for 2,000 years, except it says that we are the temple, which, by the way, Hanukkah has a message to us, too, and so as far as the end times. So that is the blueprint. This is the blueprint of the end time revelation, 
And from this, you're going to see, you're already, as I'm talking, I can see wow. your, your things are clicking yeah. oh. because it's going to have all sorts, it's going to tell us all sorts of things about what is happening, what will happen, and how to, re, how to resist. And so that's where we can go now. We want to open it up. But, but, but this is something where people would have no idea as they celebrate this and get my, get, you know, I got a gift, I got this, I, li- I have no idea how right. deep this thing is.